Hey reefers, I'm Reefer Matt and welcome to the Reef Cave. Today I'd like to talk about Hanna checkers. I have a few different Hanna checkers here. I have the alkalinity checker, the calcium checker, the uh, nitrate high range, and the phosphate ultra low range. And I'd like to show you a few tips, tricks, and myths about these Hanna checkers. Stay tuned. Okay, well, I thought I'd start with the alkalinity HANA checker since this is the easiest one to use. And it's probably the uh, first one most people buy. So my first tip is to get a little turkey baster from the dollar store, take the needle off of it. And I don't really go by the graduations on here, but it's real good just to get water out of the tank. And that way you can uh, put it in here a little better than doing like the little droppers and stuff. So I'll show you how I do that. And what I like to do is I rinse out the vial twice. Uh, I, don't, I don't put our own water in these when I'm done. Oh, we'll get to that later. But I just rinse them out with tap water and then I dry them. But uh, I fill them up and then I go empty them out. Same thing with the syringe and then I fill it again just to make sure I don't have any residue or anything inside of here. So I'll go empty this out real quick. And I'll take another sample. And you go by the line that's on here, you'll see a little belly where your level's at, and that's where you want it to be on the line. That's called the meniscus. Right about there. You can see that. There we go. So the belly of that line, you want it on the line of the vial. And that's supposedly the 10 milliliters. But for this tester, it'll work just fine. Okay, so now we have our water sample. You wanna make sure your vial is nice and clean. So I use my shirt for this. You can use a microfiber cloth or something soft, to get off any fingerprints or anything like that because it will affect the reading. You have smudges on there. And I like to put it with the 10 milliliter facing the front every time I use it. That's just me. They recommend doing that just because if there's any scratches in the vial, it may affect the reading if you put it one way or the other, which we'll get to that in a little bit too. And this is the DKH tester, by the way. There is a uh, parts per million tester. So C1, we got our water sample in there. You hit the button. And then it's gonna say C2. Now this thing keeps flashing forever and ever, which does happen sometimes. If you just hold this button in, and I'll do it now real quick, it turns the tester off, just like that. So then you don't have to sit there and wait because sometimes it just seems like it takes forever. I don't know why it does that, but it does every once in a while. And sometimes it's quicker just to turn it off and redo it. So we'll go back to C1 again. That's just neat. If you have to turn it off, just hold the button in. Okay, now it says C2. Now we're going to put in our reagent. I just got fingerprints, so you know I'm going to have to wipe those off. I like to take my reagents and swirl them just so I get consistent readings. I'm not so sure if these come from the lab as a good mixture or not to where you don't have to do this, but it's just something I like to do. Shaking it is going to put air bubbles in it and that's going to affect the reading. So that's why I kind of I swirl it around. And then you got to make sure you use this uh, adapter all the time when you're using this test kit. It's important to use it. You don't want to use just this. You put it on like that and you got numbers here. You're going to draw it all the way up until, let me see my camera here. There's two different lines there. You want the bottom line lined up with the very first line for zero. That's how far up you're going to draw it. As you put in your reagent there, it'll be easier to see with the reagent in it. And you see you got all that air room there. 
I stopped it there. Right about there every time is where the reagent goes, just to give you an idea. And then if you end up with a little bit in there and you really want to get it out, take this off, pull up your plunger a little bit, put it back on, and then push it down and it'll get the rest back in there. If you really want to be a stickler for it, it may or may not affect the reading. Okay, now that we got our reagent in, the instructions say to invert it five times. You don't want to shake it to introduce air bubbles. I do it a few times, like this, a few more than five. That's just me. And once again, like I got hair and a few other things on there, you want to get all that off. And then I like to hold it up to the light Make sure I don't have any smudges or anything on there. And you put it in. I, I like to put the 10 millimeter forward, just that way I know that it's in the same spot that it was. Hit the button. And this tank's not bad, 8.2 DKH. So I don't have to make any adjustments on that tank just yet. I'll probably uh, dose it tomorrow, but uh, that's a good number. And then to turn it off, you just hit the button again, or you can hold it in, like I, like I said before. And uh, that's the alkalinity checker. And you don't want to leave this in for very long. I mean, you probably leave it in for 10 minutes or so at the most, because this is a dye and it'll stay in the glass. And they say it'll affect the reading if you, if you let it stay in there. So rinse this out uh, as soon as possible. Just don't have a whole bunch of them just sitting there because it's possible it could stay in the glass but you can always just have extra cuvettes too and that's the alkalinity test this is the calcium checker and when you open it up you're like oh boy there's a lot of stuff in here and it looks complicated and you know it sort of is once you do it a couple times it's not so bad um, some people struggle with this test because it uses a very small sample of water. Uh, but we'll break it down and I'll show you how to be successful in getting repeatable readings on this test. Okay, our first step says to put in one milliliter of reagent A, which is this reagent here. Same thing as the alkalinity reagent, I like to swirl it. This is one test that I don't use that often. So that's why I like to swirl these up every once in a while. And we got our vial here. Now in this particular tester, you want to use uh, distilled water instead of RO water. The instructions may even call that out. But that's where some people uh, have trouble because they use RO water and their RO water has some impurities in it and it will affect the reading. So first I'm going to rinse out my vial with some distilled water just to get any residues out that may be from testing last, last time I used it. I'll just do that real quick. Because on this test you don't get 10 milliliters of tank water. You get one milliliter of this and then you fill it up the rest with distilled water and then i'll show you what you go from there the actual sample from the tank is very small and there is a trick to it but for now set that down we're going to put in our one milliliter of reagent Draw it up until that bottom part of the plunger is on the zero. There's 0.1, you want it up there. Sometimes it's hard to see on camera. 
And then I like to cap my reagents up because I have spilt them. I even got some on my hand now. So you want to make sure you don't accidentally bump it and waste, you know, this is like, I don't know, close to 30 bucks for these reagents. So you don't want to go knocking them over, at least on this one. Okay, so you're going to put in your one milliliter. And there's a little bit left in there. So as I said with the alkalinity one, take that off. Pull up your plunger a little bit, put it back on, and push it down back into the vial. And then that gets it out. And then the rest of this gets filled up to our 10 mill milliliter mark with distilled water. Um, I don't want to stick my syringe that I normally stick in my tank water into this, um, but you can have a separate turkey uh, base or syringe if you want for your uh, distilled water. I'm just going to use the pipette that they gave me. It'll just take it an extra few uh, seconds to fill this up. You just keep filling it up until you get to your 10 milliliter mark. Okay, I'll get rid of the jug here. And if you go over a little bit, that's okay. These are not uh, scientific instruments. These are hobby grade instruments. So there is some room for error in these. And they're not, uh, they don't read perfectly. There is a margin of error built into them. An accuracy. So we take this, we're going to wipe off the fingerprints that we just put on it. With whatever you choose, I like to use my shirt. That's just because I lose uh, a cloth if I put a cloth around. And I like to stick mine with the 10 milliliter up front, just like that. First, I guess I should invert it, even though it's clear. The instructions do say to do this. Okay, hit our C1. Now it's asking for C2. Now there's two different steps in this. The first one involves putting our, our tank sample in and then we're gonna put the rest of this packet in here as well. You can do it in either order. It says to put the tank water in first, uh, but I'll do this and then we'll take the camera and I'll show you uh, the tank uh, water part. So I like to flick them, get all the stuff down into the corner. So when you cut it, it ain't going everywhere on you and you're losing half of it. And I like to keep little kid scissors like this in my kits so that way I don't lose the scissors. Just like that. And here's the reagent. Kind of fold it like that. And we'll stick it in the vial. And try to get all the reagent you can. If there's still some in there, you know, just tap it around, try to get it just like that. Just try to get as accurate a reading as possible. And you can set that aside. And when we get everything in here, we're really gonna to wanna to shake this. I'm just gonna lightly shake it. This one you do shake, just to kind of get it uh, uniform. And I'll, let's go to the tank and I'll uh, show you that. Okay, so this is the instrument you'll be using to uh, get your tank sampled. It's a very small sample. You have to use this tip as well. So make sure you put the tip on this. You don't want to use this by itself. And there's two different positions on this. That's one. 
that's two. You'll feel it stop. If you go slow and light, you'll feel it stop about right there. And then that's the other one. For drawing up your water sample, go to the first one, stick it in the tank water, and slowly bring it up like that until it stops. And then you can take this out of the tank, just like this. We're gonna push it in. We're gonna slowly draw it up. And that little bit, if you can see it, that's how much tank water you're gonna use for your sample. All right, so now, before this thing times out on me, I think there's, there's so many minutes and they'll just shut themselves off to save the battery. So now you want to hit it to the second spot. So you go to the first one like you did, and then the second one pushes the last little bit of water in there. And you'll see this change to a dark purple. So shake it up real good. Instructions say for 15 seconds, and then they'll let this sit for 15 seconds because you're going to have a ton of air bubbles in it. And those air bubbles will affect the reading. So let, let this thing sit for, you know, 15, 20 seconds. Like I said, hopefully you don't time out on the timer. I'll, I'll look it up in a minute. I just want to get this test over. Otherwise, you could just put regular, I think you just put regular out this filled water in there and redo the C1. But get this wiped off and hit the button. Looks pretty clear. I put our 10 milliliter in the front. Give it five seconds. Don't time out on me. Okay, let's try it. And that's 422. That's not bad. It's not a bad number at all. So that's how you do the calcium checker. So we're some people have the problem is they're using RO water and it still has some uh, calcium in it even after going through the RO and everything. Uh, maybe they're showing like, you know, one TDS or whatever. So, hey, you never know what that one TDS is. So it could be, could it be calcium? So make sure you use distilled water uh, for your test. And then the other tricky part is knowing where to stop on this when you're drawing your sample. You don't want to go all the way down when you're drawing it. The going all the way down is only to put it in the vial. When you're drawing your sample, push it there on the first one and then slowly up. And that's the calcium test.